Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial with Vegas Pro 17 and we're going to be looking at how to edit special effects. And now these are going to be the beginner special effects or just the default ones that are already on the program. Uh, nothing crazy here, anything like a special thing or anything. If you have any special effects you would like to know how to do, uh, let's say like the like if you wanted to make a clone of yourself, if you wanted to teleport, stuff like that, let me know in the comment section below and I would love to make a tutorial on that in the future. But for this one, we're just going to be going over the bare bones basics of how to edit special effects into your videos. Before we get into it, I do want to shout out this guy, uh, Z Havoc. I apologize if I did say your name wrong. Uh, but they were asking about uh, specifically the swirl effect, how to edit it, how to add it to a video, uh, and whatnot. And, I, and it kind of gave me the idea, well, why don't we go over pretty much almost every video effect? Obviously not every single one, because look at how many there are in the program. And again, these are all under your video effects tab. Very important section. And there is a lot of stuff here. And there would this honestly could be like a 5 to 10 hour video if I were to go through every single one and show you how to edit and add them to your video. But again, this is going to be a pretty bare bones video. This is just going to be the uh, gist uh, scratching the surface of these. And I want you guys, I truly want you to do this after this video. Go through and try out every single one of these on your own time. Give them a shot. Relatively, they all start out the exact same. And I'll show you how you add them to the video clip. And that's pretty much it. So with me blabbering, let's get into it. We're going to go to our project media tab and we're going to import your video clips. So we're going to go up to import media. This will pop up and open up a random folder on your computer. Go through and find where your, your video clip is. I'm going to go and add a random video that I made years ago uh, or in this case, a couple months ago. We're just going to do my review on an office chair from Amazon. Uh, once that gets loaded in here, we'll drag it down to our timeline. All right, and we're just going to drag that down. It's going to add a video track and an audio track for the video clip that we have. And we're just going to grab a section of it because in your video, more than likely the entire thing is not going to be one effect or one video effect, right? You're going to have specific spots. So let's say right here I wanted to edit this scene. So I'm going to go to that spot on the timeline. I'm going to hit S as in Sally on the keyboard to split the clip essentially. And then we're going to go to where I want the effect to end. So let's end it right there. Same thing, S is in Sally. And here we go. We got one singled out clip, which we're going to add an effect to. Now, there is two ways to add an effect to a clip, which, again, we can go up here to the video effects tab. We can select an effect, grab one of these, and just drag it onto the clip itself to essentially add that effect. The other way to do that is you can go right into the clip itself. We can zoom in here. And you can click on the event effects tab it'll bring up this little window with every single one of the effects now if you're a veteran of the program like i am i pretty much know what every effect does and what it looks like without having to look at a visual but if you're new and while you're on this video i'd recommend going to through this way because at least then you get a little bit of a visual indicator before you add it to your video uh, so you know exactly what you're doing so this is the way that i prefer doing it that being said uh, we're just going to go through a few different versions here, a few different effects, and I'm going to show you how to add them, how to edit them, and kind of what of the most common effects I use in my videos and what I think you guys should know. Uh, so going down the line here, one of the most important ones is brightness and contrast. A lot of videos I see on YouTube, either the lighting isn't very good or they don't have the funds to invest in a really good lighting setup. One way to kind of cheat the system, or you can use a cheap camera recorder video, but then make it look better in post-processing via Vegas Pro 17, is to use brightness and contrast. So let's pretend that my video didn't have good lighting. Let's, let's pretend that it was very dark. So to make it darker, let's say, I'm going to take the darker uh, brightness and contrast, drag it down onto the clip, and automatically you can see it changed pretty drastically, but you can also make it even darker. So let's pretend that this is how my scene looked originally before I edited it, right? Maybe I want to make it brighter. Maybe I want to make it look a little better. So I'm going to go to the brighter. I'm going to drag that down and boom, it already looks a little bit better. Um, and we can even go through here. It gives us three different settings. We have brightness, contrast, and contrast center. Now, most videos, I like to have a little bit of extra contrast to make the darks really, really rich and dark and bring the highlights out a little bit to make the colors more pop. So the best way to do this is to move your contrast up a little bit. And you can see the darkness like on my mini fridge here on the seat cushion, 
uh, on this under piece here. They really are accentuated and really shown, especially with the coloring in my hat and my shirt now, and even my pants. Even though they got darker, they look a little bit more clear and it just looks better overall. And then if I wanted to brighten my scene, I can just bring the brightness up just a little bit, not too much. Because if you go too high, you can start to see a fade uh, on all the coloring and it just looks washed out and overexposed. You don't want that. So I'd say right there it looks pretty dang good. And it's already a drastic difference from here on my original clip. So brightness and contrast, super, super important. I honestly do this usually with every single video I ever make. So I highly recommend keeping that one in mind uh, and try to use it as much as possible because it really is important. If you ever added an effect to a video clip and you just want to remove it, you can always do that super easily by going to the event effects tab again. And as you can see here, and if you have multiple effects on a video clip like I do here, you can click between them with these little scenes. If you uncheck it, it'll remove one of them. Uh, same thing with adding it back. But if you want to remove it, you just go right over here to the little X with the effects, click on that, and it'll remove them one by one. But I want to get rid of both, so boom, then they're gone, and you're good to go. The next effect I want to get into is Chroma Keyer. Now this only comes into effect if you're going to be using green screen or blue screens. I had a couple of people asking me in comments recently on my videos, hey, can you do a tutorial on green screens? I do have a video actually talking about how to, how to use a green screen, how to set it up perfectly for a Twitch stream, but honestly, it's the same concept in Vegas Pro 17. So here it is. So you just go to Chroma Keyer. Let's say I wanted to key out the green in my hat because I obviously this isn't a clip with a proper green screen, but we're going to drag in the green screen effect here. If you had a blue screen, you'd want the blue. Same thing with these other ones. You had the, I don't know what this is. I must've made that years ago, but we're going to use the green screen here. We're going to drag that down, add to the clip and then boom. And now, as you can see, it's, it's going to make a lot of the colors messed up because I don't have a proper green screen. Uh, but there is a couple ways to make this easier. So if you click on the color here, you use your pipette tool. We're actually going to uncheck this for right now because I don't want to mess with my colors. But we're going to go in here, click the little pipette tool, and click exactly where your green screen is. And it'll automatically find the, the correct color of what it's trying to remove, essentially. And now use the, the low threshold, and we're going to drag it out. And same with the high threshold, we're going to drag it down. And then we're going to check this to make sure it's working. And I, obviously, we want to make it so just my he my head or my the coloring on my hat is being removed and nothing else. But obviously, this is going to be kind of tough because some of the colors in my hat are also in the foreground and the background. So it's not going to work perfectly. But this is literally how you use a green screen and how you remove the background. Uh, to For an example, if I were to add a video track, so right-click, insert video track above it, and it drags something. Uh, actually, we're going to have to use a different clip. So we're just going to add the pog emote, all right? We're going <laughs> to include that. We're going to drag it down over our clip that has the effect, right? And then we're going to use the event pan slash crop window. And we're going to make it smaller and put it right there. All right. And now what we're going to do is put this underneath the clip. So I'm going to take this and put it up, move this down, and then drag it on top. And as you can see, now the pog is showing through my head. Now, obviously, this looks bad because, again, it's not a proper green screen. But this essentially is all you have to do if you have a green screen and you want to remove the background. So to make this a little less complicated and to put it in slow motion for you, all you got to do is go into the event effects, go to chroma keyer, grab the green screen, you drag it down onto your video clip that has the green screen. Once your effects window pops up you go into the color grab the pipette tool and you click on your green screen it'll automatically find <laughs> whoops it'll automatically find the right color it'll add it in there and then you just adjust the low and the high threshold until it looks good uh never i never use the blur amount because it just looks bad in general i've never used the blur uh but yeah the low and the high are the two that you want to mess with and that is how you make a green screen in vegas pro 17. Another really important one is color balance. You can also use color corrector or color curves for this one. I usually just go with color balance. I think it's the easiest one to edit with and it does relatively the same thing. So we're going to go to color balance and let's just say, I don't know, for some reason your camera made blues really prominent in your video and you want to tone down the blues. So we're just going to add the default one this time. We're going to drag it down onto the clip. It's going to open up the effects tab, 
You can make this a little bit smaller too. And as you can see, we get the traditional red, green, and blue tints that we can edit with these little scroll wheels. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty drastic. So if you move the red, obviously the screen's gonna get more red. Green and blue. And you can change the type as well to the highlights, the shadows, or the midtones. I usually just mess with the midtones. Um, but really this helps with any type of scene, any type of situation. You can also make this a little bit more advanced. You can make this animated. And what I mean by that is you can have it change over time. So as you can see, we have a beginning and, a mi and an end to our clip here. So if I wanted to say at the beginning of the clip, I wanted to have it normal, but then at the end, I become all red as if I'm getting angry or something like comedic effect. Super easy. All you're going to do is we're going to go to the reds, the red tone. We're going to click on this little animate button. This little timeline will appear here. We're going to click on the very first keyframe, make sure it's all normal. Then you're going to go all the way to the end, to the uh, end of our clip. And we're just going to move the red all the way to the end. And it, as you can see, it creates its own keyframe. You don't have to do anything. And as you can see, it automatically switches for us. And it just slowly turns red as the rage boils inside me. But yeah, that's that's literally it. It's, it's pretty easy. And if you want to get rid of that, you can just click on this to get rid of the animation altogether. Uh, or if you want to get rid of just like one keyframe, like if you messed up, you can just right click and delete. And that's that's pretty much it. So that's how you animate color balance. That's how you change color balance on your videos. Really, really important. Some of these other effects like defocus, crop, cookie cutter, deform are more like fun effects. Not necessarily that they're going to come into focus very much. Uh, no pun intended. But they are nice to have, and they're pretty self-explanatory. So, for instance, if you wanted to add it to focus, you just click the one that you want, drag it down to your clip, let go, and it automatically will add a focus effect, and then you can change the radius of it, the effect, you know, orientation of it, all that good stuff. Um, and that's, that's honestly going to be the same for every single one of these effects that I do not cover in this video. So, please, again, if there is an effect in the video I didn't cover, just test it try it out mess around with it that's the best way to learn and that's the best way i learned how to use all these myself i never had tutorials that i could watch when i learned all this stuff i am i learned this all self-taught and that's why i want to give this to you guys so it's easier for you so you don't necessarily have to go through all that but it is a good way to learn and i've always been a hands-on learner and i think that's just the best way to do it this one i see quite often especially like in comedy videos and stuff pinch slash punch if you guys ever want to make something bigger on screen or maybe show something more exaggerated. Uh, so for instance, if we wanted like a maximum punch effect, we're gonna drag that down and boom, you can make someone look really overweight uh, or make their head larger. And you can move this around with this little center option and obviously have a pretty interesting effect overall. You can change the amount as well and make it even opposite. So they make them smaller. Uh, you can change all these different settings, make the radius even smaller. So you can make it look, I don't know, a little bit less like you can actually, that actually just the screen cap looks like my back actually has an issue and that's not edited. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, mess around with it, have some fun. Uh, that is the pinch and punch effect. And I know that some people wanted me to uh, go over that. I went over this one in my previous video on how to pixelate a specific area. I'll have a link to this, to that video in the description below. Please go check it out if you would like to know how to blur out a specific spot on your video or like blur out a license plate or something on a vehicle. Super important, super needed, uh, but I'm not going to go with that in this video because I already made it, so go check it out. Sharpen is another pretty important one. Again, this is more of if your camera records very softly. I know a lot of smartphones tend to record soft images. And if you want to add more of a sharpening effect, again, you just click on sharpen, select any one of these you want. I usually do the medium. We'll drag that down to our timeline. And as you can see, it already started to take effect. And you can adjust this to what you think would look best or worse. Um, obviously, full amount, it just it's over sharpened. It looks terrible. I would never ever say you should do that but having a little bit of extra sharpening on a video makes it look a little more professional and makes it look a little more high quality in general all right now to the swirl effect this is the one the gentleman wanted me to go over uh, i'm not 100 percent sure exactly what he wanted me to cover specifically but we're just going to reset to none to begin with we're going to drag it down to our clip we're going to add it it's going to give us pretty much the same effect uh, or options as we got with the pinch and punch uh, again we can change the amount Go opposite swirl or the right swirl. And then you can also change where it is, the location, using this little radial center thing by just clicking and dragging. 
you can change where it is or like how big the radius is of the swirl. So if you just want it like just my head, I don't know, to be messed up, I guess. Like that. Pretty cool. And again, with every single effect, you can animate them by this little animate button. And it adds the same type of timeline as before. So if you want it to move with my head or something like that, so like at the beginning here, obviously it's in the wrong spot. So you want to start it there. Change the amount just a little bit. It's so like that. But if you wanted to follow my head, we want to move it there. I'll do this pretty quickly so it's not like a five hour video here. But there we go. You get the gist of what I'm talking about. So it follows my face. If I wanted to make my face look horrendous <laughs> with the swirl effect, that's essentially how you do it. And again, there's also different versions already pre made that you can just drag and drop. I always reset to none. That's what I start out with. And then I edit it to the way I like it and put it in the spot that I like. But that essentially is your swirl effect. So that is going to be it for most of the effects that I'm going to show in this video. I know I didn't go over every single one of them. And like I said, it's mainly just to cut down on time. And I don't want you guys sitting here for hours. Like I said, if there's an effect I didn't go over and you really, really don't understand how to use it, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to make another video on this or maybe go over the ones I missed in this video. But like I said, most of these are relatively the same in the execution. You just click the one that you want, you drag it down to your video, a little window pops up for the editing, and you can change up the settings as much as you need to for it to work properly. So that's pretty much it. I mean, just give or take, just try it out, you know, test it out. The more you use it, the better you'll get at it. That's really all I can say. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like to show your support. As always, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss the next upload because YouTube's algorithm is really crappy and it's been not showing up in people's sub boxes and it truly, truly helps with the support. Love everybody that's been here lately and all the new subs that's been coming to the channel. It truly means the world to me. And we we'll hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.